Hi, this is Keith Townsend from VirtualizedGeek.com, coming from you again from another Undisclosed location. Today is March the 5th. Uh, we are going to talk about three separate uh, things tonight, I think are pretty good topics for you, virtualization and technology, things that can't get enough of this. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually a couple of dozen of you guys that actually watch these videos, so I'm very grateful. Tonight, we're going to talk about AWS uh, versus VMware. Uh, there was a R technical article that highlighted that Amazon uh, is starting to encroach a bit onto VMware's uh, enterprise stomping grounds. We're going to talk about Best Buy and they're rolling away their teleworker program as well as virtual labs. We're going to talk about virtual, a virtual virtual lab versus a physical virtual lab, lab and when you should consider one over the other. So for the first conversation, we're going to talk about VMware versus AWS. There was an Ars Technica article that highlighted the fact that AWS has reduced their workflow instances by as much as 28% which is a nice chunk, especially when you're looking at an enterprise budget and especially an enterprise uh, that's very cost conscious. And how VMware should be concerned about this when it comes to uh, encroaching on their uh, enterprise kind of uh, bread and butter. VMware, as most of you read the blog and our in virtualization know, that uh, they pretty much own the virtual workspace for most enterprise workloads. Uh, the article, I think, was very accurate in saying that VMware has something to fear when it comes to AWS. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of cloud-like services in the enterprise. So having a virtualized back, uh, virtualized back end running by some type of cloud management solution, whether that's vCloud, OpenStack, Eucalyptus, Abiquo, take your pick of management solutions. And then having developers and consumers of those service write their APIs and request new workloads and manage their workloads via that management interface. AWS is completely there right now. They uh, most definitely focus on the end user of the infrastructure. So when you look at workloads that would be uh, desirable to startups uh, or startup-like companies like Zynga, they would, or even uh, established companies like Netflix that's really never had a data center, they built their whole applications based on a cloud model. Enterprises so are not so much that way. You know, if you have an Exchange server, uh, you're not going to all of a sudden go from running Exchange to running some uh, uh, some instance of like Zimbra or some other uh, cloud-based solution. If you run Exchange, you're going to like Exchange. When you virtualize Exchange, your drivers for virtualizing Exchange are different than the drivers of a startup or enterprise looking to write new applications, looking at virtual workloads that you would have run in the Amazon.com or AWS service the drivers are just different. So I don't think price is as critical as a feature as the Ars Technica article made it out to be. However, I do agree that when it comes to public cloud, uh, VMware has a, has a difficult image. I mean, VMware uh, from a business practice perspective is a complicated organization. They don't mind competing with their partners. Last week, they made the comment at their partner exchange that they should uh, all be really concerned about AWS and making sure enterprises avoid going to AWS because a loss of a workload uh, to AWS is a loss not only to VMware, but to the whole VMware partner relationship. So a loss to VMware and their partners, not just to VMware. Uh, they, need to, they needed to highlight this because VMware does compete against their partners. I've highlighted on the blog before that uh, I'm not sure where VMware is going to go with their relationship in the VCE uh, alliance. Cisco seems a little bit hesitant in that alliance now that VMware has bought Nacera. Uh, EMC isn't obviously going anywhere because EMC owns VMware, but VMware's desire is to control the data center. 
And when you your desire is to control the data center, you will alienate a lot of your hardware partners. That's just not on the hardware side. VMware competes directly with their consulting partners, so their professional services uh, division actually competes directly with uh, professional services from the likes of HP, uh, Accenture, and the like. So uh, VMware really needs to control that message, understand how they're going to uh, benefit both uh, their stockholders and their partners and meet the goal of making sure that the vCloud, vFabric, uh, vSpear message is spread across the enterprise and able to offer AWS, uh, not only AW, compete with AWS when it comes to uh, features, but AWS when it comes to price. So that's the AWS story. The other story that I wanted to follow a little bit has been Best Buy. So Best Buy, if you haven't heard, has rolled back their teleworking program similar to Amazon, I'm sorry, similar to Yahoo. Not just similar to Yahoo, but very much like Yahoo in the rationale. The rationale is that if employees come into the Minneapolis uh, office, they will be more productive and more and more collaborative. That if they kind of circle the wagon and have the team come in and solve their very challenging problems face to face, that it will be much more effective than their current model. Best Buy to date has been extremely uh, advanced in their telework program. Not only have they had a telework program, but the whole nature of the program has been pretty much focused on efficiency. So if you are efficient and get your work done, it doesn't matter where you get your work done uh, from or what times you get your work done. Just produce the product. They've most definitely changed that approach to a much more traditional approach that some of us that are really used to telework and a very liberal collaboration uh, policy probably raise a brow to. I'm really, you know, kind of weary of uh, the approach that Best Buy and Yahoo are taking. If Best Buy and Yahoo are successful and turn around their business, I'm wondering out loud, what does that mean for the whole telework movement overall? Specifically when it comes to virtualization, you know, VDI guys are virtualization guys. So virtual desktop infrastructure, we like uh, virtual desktop infrastructure, even if it hasn't caught on in the entire enterprise as much as we would like to. And virtualization taking over the desktop the way that we foreseen that it had, would be over the past four or five years. If that doesn't happen, an area that it most definitely has taken over has been for telework. So solutions like Zen Desktop, VMware View have been, uh, and obviously Zen App, have been huge parts of most organizations' telework programs. And if telework goes away, what happens to the VDI movement in general? Does it stall? You know what, uh, that's, I, I think that's a very good question. And then the last topic I think is a little bit fun for us more pure geeks. I'm not claiming to be a more pure geek, but you know I think it is a fun topic. It's the topic of labs. You know, practically speaking, if you want to learn virtualization, virtualization is a similar skill set as uh, networking. You need to get your hands on it. You need to play around with the different products, whether it be KVM, uh, Zen, Zen Server, uh, VMware, or Hyper-V. It most definitely helps to get your hands on the actual product. The question is, what's the best approach to do that with? We can go the traditional route, buy a couple of servers with 16 to 24 gig of RAM, a hardware-based switch, and a hardware-based storage solution like a NAS, uh, a cheap NAS array. Put it all together, install our favorite hypervisor on it, uh, install the management suite, and then practice until our little heart's desire. However, if you're a true virtualization geek, why go with a physical lab at all? Why not go virtual? VMware is hosting a cloud-based lab service that's coming around. I, in the beta, haven't really got around to plan around with it. But even more closer to home than that, why not just buy a, one server, 
be a fairly beefy server. I wrote a blog post on this with maybe 24 to 32 gig of RAM and virtualize your whole infrastructure. You can install a bare metal hypervisor like ESXi free. You can install KVM, you can install Hyper-V. Uh, KVM and Hyper-V I'm not as familiar with when it comes to running nested VMs, but I most definitely know with ESXi fee free or even VMware Workstation or VMware Player, you can run nested VMs, especially ESXi. So you can run ESXi, uh, maybe two or three versions of ESXi, uh, your NAS, your virtual switch, and then uh, install uh, the management suite. And then underneath the hypervisors that you install, you can actually run a full app. If you do a search on the blog for VMware Workstation, you'll come up, you'll, uh, the results show a ton of labs that I've installed, an entire VDI solution. I've actually installed Zen Desktop within VMware Workstation. I've run a VDI in a box within VMware Workstation. I've obviously run the VMware suite uh, of vSphere within VMware Workstation. This is all one single solution without needing to actually go out and buy a uh, physical set of hardware. So kind of practice what you preach. Great, uh, I think it's a great article and uh, something that kind of gives you some food for thought. I would encourage you to take a look. That concludes episode three of uh, Virtualized Geek Tech Talks. You can find links to the articles that we discussed within the show notes at virtualizedgeek.com. Thanks, and I'll talk to you next week.